Today we are going to talk about Lior Suchard, a mentalist who says he doesn't use trickery or gimmicks. Well, hello everyone. Um, I had a video that I had spent a, a lot of time on with, uh, I guess, um, little bits of uh, television shows, okay, with uh, Lior Suchard saying various things and doing various things um but because of this copyright infringement and i know a lot of people on youtube get away with it and uh but like i said i'm not going to upload this video because because of that but what i will do is upload the links in the description to what i'm going to say to verify everything I do say. Now, I'd say about uh, I don't know, two or three years ago, I first saw him on uh, Jay Leno. And when he went on Jay Leno, um, he made a comment. Um, and the comment that he made was reminiscent of his predecessor or mentor, whatever you want to call him, uh, Uri Geller. I'm sure everyone recognizes this mug. Now, if you don't know who Uri Geller is, Uri Geller became famous in the 70s by telling people he had real powers and could bend spoons. And he was haunted basically the rest of his life by a man a great man named The Amazing Randy, okay, who proved time and time again that Uri Geller was a fraud. And then decades later, out of Israel again, okay, nothing against people from Israel, okay, um, but here comes this Lior, uh, who goes on national TV and says that, uh, on the Jay Leno show, he was quoted as saying, once again, everything I say, there's uh, there's, there's links in the description, okay, so the, the quotes, okay, have lots of merit here. So he goes on national TV and he says, the difference between a mentalist, what I do, and a magician, is what I do doesn't involve trickery or gimmicks. So no trickery, no gimmicks. Then he goes on to tell Jay Leno this story about when he was a baby, he was eating soup and the spoon was bending. So enough, that's, you know, that's, that's when I have to call official BS. The problem here is he's using techniques that the creators of these techniques, okay, you know, did an amazing amount of work, okay, a lifetime ago. And he uses the same techniques that they developed and he attributes nothing to them because he goes on and says that they're real powers. So in one of the videos, he talks to uh, Zach Efron. Link down below. Okay. So when you see the link, you'll see that he's talking to Zach Efron on the Jay Leno show. And he asked Zach to name his first love. So Zach goes on and says her name is Katie. And Leo Shador writes it down in full view of Jay Leno. Katie, before Zach even says it, and says, is it Katie? Now normally that would be a minor miracle. Because he also asked Zach the question, have you given me any information beforehand? And Zach said, absolutely not. So, skip ahead. We have a show, Varney and Company. There's a lady on this show named Elizabeth. And she was the, how do you say, the straw that broke Lior's back. So, Lior goes on the show and he says, I'm going to name your cat or your dog. Okay. And uh, so, there's no way he would know the name of her dog. So national TV says, have you told me anything? And she says, no, I swear, no. So he says, the name of your dog is Pudding. 
like P-U-D-D-I-N or P-U-T-T-I-N, pudding. So she goes, yes, you're right. Then she does something that Lior didn't expect. She holds up a piece of torn paper with a circle around it. And once again, link down below. And the paper says, put in. He says, yeah, we did this at the break. You see, I even wrote it down. Now, basically what that did, without, like I said, lay people probably wouldn't have even noticed this. But a magician would have noticed. Because what was in her hand was a piece of what's known as the center tear trick. Now the center tear, magicians use or mentalists use to get information from people. What they do is this. They make a fold on a piece of paper like this and they make another fold, simple. They fold a square into two halves and makes four one quarters, right? Now, what they do is the mentalist will make a circle on the piece of paper and tell the spectator or the audience member, whomever they need to get information from. Write the word inside the circle and then give it back to me folded. Then the mentalist says, I don't need this information. I'm not even going to look at it. The reason I wanted to, you know, to write it down is because once it's in your head and you write it down, it's easier for me to, you know, to get that knowledge. So then they take that paper and they throw it away. And you think everything is cool. Except for the fact the center tear is called the center tear for that reason. When you rip it and tear it up, you retain the center so you'll find a circle around it and the word so while we're watching Barney and company here's what we notice when Elizabeth holds up her piece of paper that she retained from the commercial break there's a circle around the word pudding now that in itself okay doesn't mean that you uh, Lior used the center tear on Elizabeth so, let's confirm it. Let's skip ahead again. Lior does a video or an interview, okay, with a lady, a very astute lady. During this interview, link down below, the lady asks, Lior, I'm thinking of something. So go ahead, okay, and you know, I, I'm thinking of a couple of things, okay, and you know, we have this list here. Can you name what I'm thinking of? And he says, oh, no, 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 we don't do it like that. Then he says, uh, okay, uh, can, you, you, can you tell your cameraman to take a break here? So the cameraman, who doesn't take a break, I guess he was told beforehand, under no circumstances do you turn that camera off. He follows them. Yuri, or sorry, Lior, is, okay, he hands her a piece of paper she takes this piece of paper and has it against the wall. And you hear Lior in the background saying, write inside. So, okay, she writes a key, I guess, I'm assuming whatever she had inside this piece of paper, the center tear, okay? And he garners whatever information he needs. But here's what happens. When they go to sit down later, I'm assuming the word that she wrote Lear didn't understand. How do I know that? Link down below. When you watch the link, you'll see that the word that she had wrote was gnome. G as in golf, N as in November, O as in Oscar, B as in Victor, sorry, okay, M, okay, as in Michael, and E as in Echo, gnome, G, N O M E, a mythical creature, a short mythical creature, a gnome. Now, Lear, I guess he didn't know what a gnome was, or in the cave, the English language, he didn't understand the word. Now, the problem is, if you're looking at a word and you don't understand it, that's fine. 
But if you're reading someone's mind, I'm pretty sure her mind didn't have the word gnome in it. Her mind was thinking of a mythical creature. So if he's, if he's reading her mind, he should have saw the gnome. Okay? But because he wasn't reading minds and he was reading papers, he didn't understand the word. Okay? So he says, a gnome. What's a gnome? What is that, Russian? Okay? Now, even though I think that's more than enough concrete evidence, okay, that this guy is scamming, let's go back to that Jay Leno show. So if that wasn't enough, let's skip ahead to he's on the Jay Leno show. He's got Zac Efron and J Jay Leno. And he does a stunt called the Invisible Touch, which is a gimmick. Okay, it, it, it's a stunt that requires a gimmick, okay, and it's done by magicians and mentalists all over the world. So I still can't believe he did this. So he does this trick with Zac Efron and Jay Leno. The essence of the trick is simple. While Zac Efron okay, is sitting there with his eyes closed, Leo pretends to touch him, but doesn't touch him. Instead, he touches Jay Leno, but Zac feels it. And then they do the reverse. Jay Leno has his eyes closed. He touches Zac, and Jay Leno feels it. The problem is, okay, it's a stunt. And magicians do it all the time. And how is it performed? Well, let me show you one of the methods. Not the only one, but the method he probably used. In my hand, you're not going to see this. Because they're what's known in the magic world as loops. They come on a sheet like this. They're very small. But to prove to you that there's something there, here. We we'll take this piece of paper. See? Now, right there, it's in between my hand and my thumb. So it's a small, little, invisible thread. Okay? So what he does is he can hold, okay, one end like this. You can't even see it. Then he goes up to Zach hooks it with his thumb, goes like this to Zach's face, which he does in the video, look at the link, touches Zach's chin, then goes and touches Jay Leno's chin, and says, Zach, has someone touched you? And Zach goes, oh yeah, someone touched my chin, even though Lior doesn't touch his chin. It looks like his hands just go right by it. What the audience obviously can't see is this invisible thread. And that's the way this trick is done. Actually, that's one of the ways it's done. But I'm assuming it's the way he did it because the hand movements match, okay, this particular method. And which is why it's insane that he did this trick. Because even though the layperson wouldn't have got it, any magician okay, would have known the method he was using. Which is why he's surprising that he would go on national TV and say these are his ESP powers, that he doesn't use trickery or gimmicks. And like I said, the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is because of the individuals who created these techniques. They're the ones, okay, who deserve, okay, all the praise, okay, for everything he's done because he's using their methods. But he doesn't attribute that to anything. Okay, he says, okay, they're his own powers. Bending spoons as a baby. Okay, I think I've caught enough official BS. Um, I just wanted to say my piece. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, show the actual videos um, during this, which is why everything's in the links. Um, hope you enjoyed it. A little bit different from what we normally do. Thank you. And this is on because there's about four people around me. Okay. Thanks.